Hi everybody, and welcome to this video on Parabola's Intro to Quadratics. Uh, if you've been on the same track that I've been on, we've been learning all about factoring, but we haven't really looked at why we factor. And so we're going to really look in this next unit about why we factor and what that actually means for what we call parabolas, these curved shapes that we see all around us. And so let's see some situations where we see these shapes around us. One place we see these is just by drawing a graph. Um, we can graph this and uh, it's in the form where we had linear relationships were in the form y equals mx plus b, we see that these are in this form. Rather than just a linear part to it, there's also this squared part to the equation, which makes it something that is um, a curve. And so where do we actually see this? Well, we see this in the Gateway Arch in St. Louis. This is actually called an inverted catenary, which is slightly different, um, but it is, for all our intents and purposes, it is uh, a, a parabola. And uh, it's really interesting, actually. I've had a chance to go up this. You can go inside, and there are little slits here at the top where you can look out over the city. And uh, you can literally feel the whole thing swaying in the wind a little bit. And then as you go up the elevator on the side, what they had to account for, because it's a curved structure, is every little while the elevator actually gets tilted a little bit. And so they have to reorient the elevator so that your, uh, your feet are on the, uh, flat on the ground. And so it starts to tilt, and then it'll turn a little bit, and then it starts to tilt as it goes up further and turn a little bit. It's quite a structure, and it took a long time to build. And um, unfortunately, there were some people that died even in the building of that because it was such a challenge to make. We also see parabolas in the Friendship Bridge in Niagara Falls. Um, if you ever get a chance to go on the what used to be the Maid of the Mist, um, and you can go down and go to the bottom of Niagara Falls, and you see this bridge uh, that's right there. Uh, it's called the Friendship Bridge, obviously representing the fact that Canadians and uh, people from the United States are friends, right? We share the longest border in the world. And so that's clearly a parabola as well. We can also look at radio telescopes. The actual dish of a radio telescope is in the form of a parabola. It kind of looks like it might be a circle, but it's not actually a circle. It's a parabola. And what a parabola does is that anything coming from outer space, it allows the light or the wavelengths or whatever's coming in to bounce off that radio telescope and right to the focal point right here. Another example is solar cookers and they work by the same principles of a, as a radio telescope but they're collecting specifically the sunlight and reflecting it to that focal point where the food is and gets heated up. We can also use parabolas to talk about business and profit. Uh, oftentimes, the business models that are out there are much more complex than a parabola, but it's a good start to understanding that we can use these for a parabola. So for example, if you sell uh, something for $10, you might not make any profit. And if you sell it for $60, you're not going to make any profit. In the $10 case, you might find that, well, uh, we can't make enough uh, money over and above what we're having to pay for it in order to make ends meet. In the $60 case, you would assume that you have way too much supply, not enough demand, because you're charging a lot of money for that item. And then you could find, okay, well, the optimal price that I want to sell that item for is exactly between $10 and $60, in this case, $35. And then in this particular business model, it gives a profit of $12,500 for that product. And so we can use that. Another thing that obviously we have lots of experience with, not motorcycle jumping, but projectiles specifically. Um, some of you may have uh, experience doing this. I doubt any of you have done anything quite this big, uh, especially over elephants. Um, they're not real, by the way. Um, but uh, once something launches through the air, it follows this predictable pattern, which is a parabola flying through the air. So whether we're throwing a ball, whether we're motorcycle jumping through the air, all of those things will follow a predictable parabola. Whether we're skiing, same thing, right? There's someone hitting a quarter pipe, and you see they go up, and then they come right back down as a parabola. Um, that's a lot of people all following each other very closely. Uh, if you think that, you're very mistaken, right? That's obviously a stop motion uh, picture of the same person. Also, we can have the same thing with, uh, with basketballs. As that's flying through the air, you can see that that launches and becomes a parabola. And we could continue that curve from the point that we sh were shown with the last picture of the basketball and we could predict if that basketball is actually going to go in the net or not. Golf, same thing, parabola. Now, what do these parabolas actually have uh, to do with the math we've been doing? Well, parabolas are something that we can model with equations. And these three equations that I have here on the left are all exactly modeling the same equation or the same parabola. 
you can see here that uh, this parabola has a few interesting features. It has these points down here, and we call these points down here x-intercepts. It's negative 1 and 3. It has this point up here, which we call the y-intercept, because that's where it goes through the y-axis. And then we have this point up here, which is called the vertex. And so I'm just going to label the vertex. It's 1, 8. And so we have all those things. And then we have this idea that every parabola is the same on both sides. This is called the axis of symmetry. So because every parabola is the same on both sides, as soon as you have one point, you know where the axis of symmetry is, we can put another point on the other side like that. Now I want you to make some connections between what you see on the graph in front of you and what you see in the equations on the left. So we're going to look at the top left equation and see if you can connect something on the graph with something in that equation. And hopefully you're seeing that it's this y-intercept right here that is the uh, major ideal idea here. This is the y-intercept. And in general, we could say that this is in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, right? Where a here is negative 2, b is 4, c is 6. And c, anytime it's in this form, is the y-intercept. We call this equation the standard form of a parabola. Well, let's look at the second equation that we have now. We have y equals negative 2, x plus 1, x minus 3. And notice there's a connection between this 1 and this 3 because the x-intercepts are negative 1 and positive 3. In fact, the x-intercepts are the opposite sign of these, right? Not plus 1, it's minus 1. And not minus 3, it's plus 3. And so in general, we have this form, a times x minus r times x minus s where r and s are the x-intercepts. So just to put two and two together here, that means that because it's x minus r, that the x-intercept must be negative 1, because x minus negative 1 would make it plus 1. And then the other intercept would be positive 3, because x minus 3 would make it x minus 3 in the equation above. And so uh, a S value of positive 3 and an R value of negative 1 are the x-intercepts in this case. We call this, the form that we've been working on all along over the last unit, the factored form. The last equation that we have here is y equals negative 2 x minus 1 all squared plus 8. Well, we haven't really seen things like that except for expanding previously. And so what I want us to connect here is this vertex, this vertex of 1, 8. Hopefully you see it in the equation here. This is the x value of the vertex. This is the y value of the vertex. Now we refer to those in terms of h and k because in general we're going to represent this as y equals a x minus h all squared plus k where h and k is the vertex, or are the coordinates of the vertex. Now this is called vertex form, no surprise there. And the interesting thing here is that because of the parabola that I've chosen, I've actually been able to rearrange this equation into all three forms. And they all represent the exact same parabola, but they all give us different information. The first one shows us the y-intercept right there. The second one shows us the zeros, or the x-intercepts. They're sometimes called zeros. And the third one shows us that vertex. And with those five pieces of information, I say five pieces of information, because from the y-intercept and the axis of symmetry, we're able to get this other point right there. With those five points, we can graph any parabola that we want to graph, and we can get the major important pieces from that. And so that's the basis of what we're going to be doing over the next two units. So keep this in mind. If you need to come back to this video, use it. This is uh, a great summary of all the different forms and what they look like when you graph them and what they tell you.